just to go over this uh, free body diagram uh, worksheet that you had to do, the 10 questions. Um, let's look at each one of them and kind of go through each one of them together. Please have all your questions, um, note them down, and then talk to me about them in the next class when we meet again um, for the last double block before the winter break. So for the first question, it was a golf ball being hit by a golf club at an angle. But it, the key thing here is the after. So it's like the golf club hits the golf ball. But then the ball goes flying and we're not being we're not asked the question of what happens while the club is hitting the golf ball. But we're asked the question, what's going on with the golf ball while it's in the air? And as you know, from projectile motion, the only kind of acceleration this object experience is, is down, right, is G. So while it's flying through the air, the only force acting on it at that instant is gravity. So it seems a little counterintuitive. Many of you are like, where should I put the applied force? Some of you wanted to have like a force sort of like the force of the club kind of in this direction. And the answer is that does not happen. That initial um, push, the initial hit of the club gives the ball the momentum to then do its thing. But once it's in the air, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. For the second question, a statue resting on the floor. So in this case, we've got the force of gravity down. And since the statue is being supported by the floor, you've got the normal force acting on it in the upward direction. Um, in this case, a statue is being pulled horizontally across a rough floor. Whenever we say rough, we mean friction. Um, it's got friction, so you can't ignore friction. Um, so that's what we've drawn. We've drawn an applied force, a force of friction, to the right and to the left, and then you've got your normal force and your gravitational force up and down. Finally, the last part of this, this statue question says it's being pulled by a rope at an angle above the horizontal across a rough floor. So in this case, you've got, um, this is the angle above, so I don't know what the angle is, maybe it's theta, but the applied force is being applied at that sort of um, random angle above the net, the, the horizontal. But otherwise, your forces are the same. Um, the normal force, force of gravity, and friction. Okay, again, because it says a rough floor. All right, the next one, a block of mass 10 kilograms is at rest on a surface inclined at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So let's say you've got this surface, and there's your angle. It's 30 degrees. Um, the force of gravity always acts straight down. You could give more information here. You could say this is equal to mg, which is equal to 10 times 9.8, um, so 98 newtons, but we're not going to go into that much detail for now. You've also got the normal force, and the normal force, like we talked about in class, is always perpendicular to the surface. So it is going to be perpendicular to that 30-degree angle. Now, they don't say anything about friction, and... This is something, this is something we're going to get into more later on in this course. So if this didn't, wasn't intuitive to you, that's okay. Um, but the fact that it's not, it's at rest means that the forces are balanced. We'll talk about that more later, but basically that implies there's some force preventing it from sliding down the ramp. And so this is because it's at rest. At rest. Okay. Um, and like I said, we'll explain that with more detail later. So if that was not totally intuitive, I wouldn't worry too much about it. All right, then we've got a block of mass 10 kilograms accelerating down a surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So in this case, you've got your normal force and your force of gravity. I've drawn a force of static friction. Um, actually, it shouldn't even say static friction. It should say it should say force of friction. Um, and the, the issue is, does that really exist? Friction may exist, may exist, or it could be frictionless, may not. So either way you drew it, I would accept that as the correct answer. You don't really know enough information from this problem to know if there's a frictional force here or not. All you know is that it's on an inclined surface and it's accelerating down. So whether you drew it or not, it, it's... I would mark it correct either way. For number seven, um, the parachutist before opening her chute. So she's just like, like, you know, flying down, like accelerating down. She's got gravity acting on her. She's got no air resistance, presumably when she first starts out. So the only force acting on her is FG. 
um, and then the parachutist after opening her parachute, and now she's descending at a constant speed. Again, we're going to get into this more later, um, so don't worry too much about that yet. But um, now, um, I kind of drew two diagrams in this example, because how, what I say here is how you label the forces depends on whether or not you include the parachute. So if you're only drawing the parachutist, as it describes, like it's the underlying term, then the actually the, the air resistance acts on the parachute, right? And how does that parachute convey that force to her through the tension in the cables that's connecting her to the parachute? So that's why I've described this as FT, the tension. Um, so if I don't draw the parachute, I'm going to call that upward force slowing her down, um, the tension force, and she still has gravity pulling her down. Now, if you drew the, the parachutist along with her parachute, then you would describe this as the air resistance acting on the parachute and gravity acting on her, okay? So either one of those two diagrams would be fine. Um, question nine, a mass is hanging from a spring. So again, it's on the earth, so we've got a gravitational force, and then we have a spring force acting up. The spring is pulling the mass towards the ceiling, um, but it's probably just hanging there, not moving. And finally, a crate is being held up by a rope attached to a crane. Same idea as the previous question, but I'll just call this force a tension force instead of a uh, spring force. So FT and FG acting opposite each other.